stressed is really the achiever's word for fear because it's kind of not okay in this day and age to walk around going, I'm really scared of that, I'm really scared of that. But when people share with me what they're stressed about, if I pull the curtains back on that, what I'll actually see is what they're frightened of. They're frightened of letting people down. They're frightened of how other people see them. So if we can actually, in those moments where we feel really worked up and, and really stressed, if we can pause there and think, what am I really worried about? It's not actually about running late or it's not actually about not replying to that email promptly. It's nearly always about how we perceive people are going to see us. So if we can pause and catch ourselves in that, you can, you can create a new story around that and think, well, I know them, they know me better than that. And you can reframe it and start afresh. On a physical level, when we're in sympathetic nervous system dominance, when we're in that red zone, in that fight or flight response, the only thing science currently knows that will get us out of that is to extend the length of our exhalation. So the other arm of the nervous system is called the parasympathetic nervous system. It's the rest, digest, repair, reproduce arm of the nervous system. And from that place, our body is able to work so incredibly efficiently. We're able to use our body fat effectively as a fuel. And it's simply because it's getting the message via the nervous system that it is safe to do all of those key uh, processes, including use our body fat as a fuel. So to come out of those stress places, I do think people have to be honest with themselves about how caffeine affects them. I think we need to explore our perception of pressure and urgency and save it for when we really need it, not make what is just a busy or opportunity filled day full of pressure and urgency. And we need to become breath aware. So essentially what I mean by that is we need to diaphragmatically breathe. So when you breathe in through your nostrils with the inhalation, your tummy starts to stick out. And then there's a gentle pause at the end of that inhalation and then you slowly exhale again through your nostrils and your belly comes back in towards your spine. And if you can really slow that style of breathing down, your body gets the message via your nervous system that you're safe. Now, obviously we all have to breathe, but it's, it's reminding ourselves to become breath aware through potentially busy days. So you might start with a breath focus practice, whether it's yoga, meditation, Pilates, Tai Chi. If none of those things appeal, it might just be going to the window or going outside placing your hands on top of your tummy and thinking of the things that you're grateful for. It might be every time you stopped at red traffic lights, instead of checking social media or sending emails, you actually breathe diaphragmatically. When you boil the kettle first thing in the morning to make warm water and lemon juice, of course, you stand there and breathe diaphragmatically. So just taking those micro pauses throughout the day to check in with your breath and just commit to becoming more breath aware. The more time we spend in that diaphragmatic breathing place, the more support that our nervous system is going to be. And I want people to be aware of the ripple effect of that. What's life like when you come into contact with someone that has that light, that amazing energy? You can't not be affected by it. So when we step up and take even better care of ourselves, it doesn't just impact us, it impacts every single person we come into contact with. And it's that ripple effect that I'm obsessed about because when we are looking after ourselves, whatever that looks like for us, food, nourishment, movement, great sleep, exposure to the beautiful sunshine that we have and living a life of contribution, when you have those aspects that are alive in your life, the way you interact with everyone is so different if those things aren't occurring. So don't ever think that it is selfish to nourish yourself, to take time out, to go for a walk barefoot on the sand and to find that purpose and follow it and trust yourself and back yourself. That's not selfish, that's necessary more than ever at this time on the planet because of the ripple effect that you then generate from the aliveness that you demonstrate to others. So the choices we make today don't just impact how we feel and function today, they're gonna to impact what that entire future looks like. And the power to change that is in your hands and in your hands only. No one else can do it for you. It's just that you have to believe that you're worth taking care of.